Hello guys, uh, today we have Vernon with us and we're going to be doing a quick demo on what may entail in the workshop. Uh, we're going to make a Wobby Kusa or a Aqua Terrarium is what we call it. And basically it is constructing the hardscape, which is uh, the substrate, the rocks or the wood. Um, and then we're going to make the plants, uh, we're going to plant the plants inside which are basically aquarium plants, but they are grown in their like immersed state. So oh, wow. they're grown out of water. Uh, and then, I'm excited. Yeah, and then, you know, you could either flood the tank with water and let it grow, or you could leave it as it is. And that's actually a lot more like easy to care for, a lot mm. less maintenance if you just leave it. So um, a lot of people think that aquarium plants have to be underwater, but actually, a big portion of the Korean plants actually grow above water and their roots are wet. So the beautiful thing about the Korean plants is they can grow either above or below the water. Yeah. I think a lot of people have concerns about caring for plants and I think that will make it a lot easier for people to maintain that afterwards because the aftercare is not as difficult as people might think. Mm, yeah, that's right. Um, so today we're going to have this kind of glass cylinder and then we will have to have a lid to keep the humidity in at least at the beginning. We have some soil and sand and some rocks mm -hmm. and then some plants as well. So yeah, should we get cracking? Should yes. we start? So this is glass. Is there a particular reason for having this material? Can we use other materials for the tanks? Yeah, we can definitely use other materials. Some people use acrylic. Mm -hmm. um, some people use bowls. You could use vases, like taller vases that they use from shops. So it, it really is quite broad. Glass is kind of the most popular because it's less prone to scratching mm -hmm. as opposed to acrylic. And it offers like a clear view. Yeah, I think this yeah. would be nice. You can see everything through it. Exactly. And you see how things are looking. Yeah when you know after work or you're checking in so that'll be nice yeah you have yeah. a few tools on the side as well yeah so the main tools we're going to use are tweezers there's a lot more bits and bobs that will come along as we're building the hardscape but the tweezers will help us to kind of plant the plants but also uh to fix the hardscape which mm -hmm. we're going to show you in a second as well so the first thing we're going to okay. do is put in some aqua soil Ooh, okay? okay so what these are this is different to normal soil. It looks yes. like more solid, like little rocks. So this is soil that's been baked into balls. And this basically stops it from disintegrating when you put it into the water. Mm. So if you think about it, if you just get potting soil and you put it in water, the whole thing goes cloudy, it gets yep. dirty. Uh, this is basically, it, it's, it's baked. And so when it is in contact with water, it doesn't just dissolve. So there's many brands out there, but they all do more or less the same thing. Mm -hmm. There's nutrients that are inside these uh, balls of aqua soil, and they can also have the ability to absorb nutrients within the water. Mm -hmm. So we call that cation exchange. So if there's certain amounts of nitrate or phosphorus um, inside the water, the soil can actually grab that and store it in the soil for future use. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm thinking like in the garden, when you have soil, you've got to keep adding other supplements and what are they called? <laughs> you have to add nutrients back into the yes. soil as you're growing. Yeah. So I'm going to get you a little um, scooper. Scooper. Yeah, just put around two centimeters inside. Okay. Can use a little brush just to flatten it out. Oh. Nice. Is there a technique for this? No. You can even use your hands if you want. This, this is your front, and then okay. later you can rotate this oh. so ladies season to show the camera like what it looks like on, on oh, that side. Oh, okay. okay. So what you want to do is make an empty section with no soil because we're going to put mm -hmm. the sand in. So oh, like okay. move a section away and slope it towards the back. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking everything had to be even, but no, let's, let's make it look natural, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So you want the, the very back part, so you, like for yourself, just visualize where you want the back to be, to be the steepest, like the mm. hill to be the steepest at the back. So I guess the good thing about this is that there's no way of making it perfect. There's no reason to make it perfect. Yeah. There is no perfect. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And, you know, uh, everyone has a different take on how to make this layout and there's no right or wrong. Uh, it's just whatever you feel is, is right for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, looking good. Um, can we? So we'll just get even more because we want more sand. Okay. And we want a, like a good portion. So how about ruining? You're undoing all my work now. <laughs> I'm trying to make it better. So. Okay, I see. <laughs> like you can see, there's a little bit more. Yes. Um, so just turn around. And so what we what we're doing now is we are creating a little beach section or like a, a bank where we can add sand. Mm -hmm. And then the soil is kind of sloping, if you see from the side, it's kind of sloping upwards so that we have more, um, more soil at the back to plant and mm -hmm. also it gives you a greater sense of depth because you're like looking into the distance yeah. with this kind of slope. Okay, so right. I'm envisioning like you're going hiking and there's a bit of a stream, so you're on the edge of that right now. Yeah. Like the land meets the water. Next is the hardscape. Uh, we call it like the backbone of the layout, so mm -hmm. it gives you the overall definition and composition of the layout. Mm -hmm. And there's different materials you can use. You can use wood, you can use rocks. Um, uh, sometimes they use like fake ornaments as well. Mm -hmm. But you know, for today, we're gonna use a uh, rock and I'll show you what that, what that is. This is called Dragonstone. Oh, that sounds expensive. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it sounds cool. It's not, it's not expensive, but it's, um, it's fairly common in the aquarium hobby, in aquascaping hobby. And it's, it's called Dragonstone. It's reminding me of like Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, <laughs> Dragonstone. Yeah, so Dragonstone. Um, it's called Dragonstone because the textures looks like the scale of a oh, dragon. Oh yeah. Yeah, because it's very like sharp and rugged edges. Mm. Yeah. And those are different colors too. Yeah, um, yeah, they're different colors uh, depending on the batch mm -hmm. that come and you know. Uh, this is completely inert, so it doesn't release any minerals in the water. Okay. Yeah. So this is there for decoration, that's and you right. can put plants around, yeah. under? Yes, yes, yep. that's right, okay. that's right. So the next part is basically, well, to me, I think it's the most exciting part because you get to create anything you want in here okay. with these materials, right? And it's as simple as putting it in. I'll just, as an example, you could take it off, but you could just put it in with like that, wedge it, and mm -hmm. just leave it and we'll, we'll secure it, it later. It would settle, right, into its position? Yes. As you put other things in? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Surround it with the soil. soil, and the soil will kind of help hold it together. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna secure it later with some glue mm -hmm. as well, so. Oh, wow, okay. Because um, they are quite heavy. They are a little bit heavy, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think that looks good. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So she's gone with kind of, two piece um, hardscape. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna secure it. And that's because, you know, if you're driving, you're taking it home, or if you're, I don't know, trying to plant stuff, you might accidentally bump the rocks and they might like fall, mm -hmm. right? So we want to just secure it so that it all kind of stays together and it's, it's solid. And to do that, we have cotton pads. So these you can just buy at like any, I thought it was a glue, a paste or something. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not that or fancy. Simple, natural, yeah, natural. Yeah. So cotton pads and some super glue. Mm. So this stuff you can just get from Bunnings. Mm -hmm. um, they're just regular super glue. It's recommended to have, it's called cyanoacrylate. It's a very specific chemical they use inside the super glue, mm. but almost 99% of the like super glues on the market have cyanoacrylate in it. Okay. And it just helps to bond the hardscape together. You basically break off a piece of this cotton pad, like so, and you like scrunch it up really mm -hmm. tight into a ball. Now it's important to scrunch it up really tightly because if you don't, it will just start opening up again. Um, and then that you way would see that. Um, you would see it and also it doesn't create a very strong bond, mm -hmm. right? And the important thing is you've got your hardscape set. You just want to wedge this in the, in the gap. Mm -hmm. between the two rocks. And then this will start smoking because it's a chemical reaction between the, the cotton pad and the glue. Mm. And then this will become rock solid. So I've done kind of like that bit. Okay. But I think what you can do is put another piece kind of just like in this gap. See, mm -hmm. there's like a little gap here. Yep. Yeah, and probably that piece will be enough. Okay. So let's try. Remember to scrunch up that piece into like a ball. Yep, that's good, that's good. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Now glue? Yep, now glue. 
And then what you can see now is there's actually bits of white that you can see. Mm -hmm. And that's like not very appealing because it looks like something's out of, like something's odd. Yeah. Right. So we're going to conceal what we just did. We're okay. going to conceal the glue marks. Right. And what I have here is dragonstone dust. Mm -hmm. So this stone is very dusty and you can actually collect the dust. Oh, so this is not something you bought? No, this is part of like... <laughs> well, at the bottom of the bag? At the bottom of the bag, <laughs> yeah. It's like very fine powder. Mm -hmm. And we're going to use this to cover up that dust that we just... Yes. I mean, not the, it's the like glue mark. like makeup for the rocks. <laughs> yeah, yes. I never thought of like Using its before. own powder. Yes, to that's right. So to do that, you put a little bit more glue in the same location. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to take a bit of this dust and just sprinkle it oh, up. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Yep. Now those white marks are kind of disappeared. Mm. It's gone because we've kind of covered it up. And yeah, so good job. That looks great. Thank you. <laughs> Next part is we're going to pour in the sand. Mm. Right, so we're just going to move some of, move some of the soil back a little bit more. Now the tricky thing is if we don't put enough sand, the soil kind of like rolls on top of the sand. Mm -hmm. And then it just kind of looks a bit like messy mm. so we want to keep it like quite a clean sandy section and to do that we're going to have to block some of the soil from rolling forward okay so we're going to put like little pieces of dragonstone just on the edges so that the big slope of soil doesn't roll so this is basically the same thing but even smaller and then what we're going to do is find a couple of pieces that that kind of fit the side so that we mm -hmm. can like just block it off Wait, maybe use, uh, maybe use this piece instead. That piece is, I don't even think that's dragonstone. That's like some other kind of stuff. <laughs> some pebble in the front. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, we've got um, kind of a, a naked bare bottom over here because that's where we, the sand is going to go. Mm -hmm. And we're going to layer the sand kind of on top as well. So this is just um, decor sand. There's no nutrients in this or anything. It's completely inert as well. Um, and it's for mainly just decorative purposes. Mm. Yeah. So just make sure that the soil doesn't you come back even, down. Yeah, and even just cover the soil so we don't see any of the soil particles. And the way you can create more depth is in the front you have a very thin layer and then you have it sloped mm. to the back as well. And this is where the the art part of it, the design part of it comes in as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're trying to create a reflection of nature, but also having it in a way that's visually appealing to you, yeah, to your own side. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And you know, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. You can, even if you do want to have a chunky section in the front, that's fine as well. Mm -hmm. But from my experience is if you want to have a thin layer, it gives you a little bit more, I guess, openness and mm -hmm. space to look deeper into yeah. the layer. Now we're going to add a little bit of detail. So these are just little pebbles. So you can see we're going like kind of from large to small. We started with two mm. large rocks, then we put in like smaller dragon stones. Now we're going to the pebbles. And this also just comes from when you observe nature, if you go on like hikes or whatever, there's never like a giant piece of rock and then like sand. There's always like small bits that have fallen yeah. from the top. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's, I guess, different scales. There's different yeah. textures as well. So this is kind of like, learning from that and mimicking that same concept. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is sprinkle some of these little pebbles at the base of the big rocks. And that way it looks a little bit more natural. Mm -hmm. I think a spoon's probably a good tool for this because we're getting into the very small details. Yeah. Yeah. And the beautiful part about this is we're not trying to be so controlled about it. You know, wherever you put it and wherever it lands, it's just how naturally it yeah. should land. If you think about water, it moves things around in a natural setting. Yes, that yes. Things aren't staying in one spot the whole time. That's right, that's right. And I think coming back to the whole point of doing aquascaping is that you observe nature and you're trying to learn as much of it mm. from nature as possible. Part of it is just kind of accepting that, you know, things aren't always going to be perfect where they are. Um, you, you don't try to artificially place everything in that exact spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And I think that's what makes the layout look really nice as well, is that it's, it looks natural. Yeah. yeah. And I think that you might have an idea in your mind, but when you execute it, it might turn out differently. Yeah. It's kind of like letting go of that control. So now we're going to plant the, the layout. And we have a, a range of different plants. Uh, some are more suitable to go at the back. Some can be in the front. Cool. So for plants, there's different types of plants and they all have different ways of growing. So for example, this here is a stem plant. So this stem plant grows really tall, as you can see like behind you, that's mm -hmm. how tall you can get. And so it's very suitable for the background because imagine if you planted it here, it would just block yep. everything. So you want to plant it at the back. And mm -hmm. so it, like, only the tips stick out behind the hardscape. Mm -hmm. And the way it grows is every time you trim it, where you've trimmed it, it grows two more shoots. <sighs> So that's how you can get it like very bushy mm -hmm. and that's how resilient these plants are. Wow. And after you've trimmed it, you can actually take the top and then plant it in the soil again and it will mm. grow again. Then the two middle ones are epiphyte plants. So these plants, you can basically just wedge in the gaps mm -hmm. and it will grow roots and these roots will hug the rocks. Mm. Doesn't need any soil, it just needs oxygen, water, a bit of nutrients and it can just grow. Yeah. And there's different, you see like different types. This one has like really tiny leaves. Mm -hmm. And these are really good to be in the front because the smaller the leaves, it kind of gives you a sense of like scale and it really accentuates how big these rocks are. Mm. It just reminds me of high school science. Like I've oh, heard yeah? that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we've got stems, epiphytes, and these are called carpeting plants. So this is a very grassy plant and the way it grows is very different. It basically grows like a leaf and then the roots kind of run laterally, like horizontally, oh. and then it pops up another leaf. Oh, so that's how runs. they keep growing. Part of it is also understanding and appreciating different ways that plants grow. Mm -hmm. And you understand what are their strengths and how can you best use their strengths in the layout to create like a harmonious kind of composition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like with any plant, like you need to know how they grow. Yeah. You need to know what they look like when they're bigger. Yeah. How much space do you need for exactly, it? Exactly, exactly. I'm just going to cut off some pieces. We don't need all of this. So I'm just cutting off a small chunk like this. To plant the epiphytes, it's, it's actually really simple. You just wedge them in the gaps. You could even just like put it down, let's say, like so. And just leave it. Mm. You don't have to, don't wedge it in. Um, the issue with epiphytes is if you stick the whole plant in the soil, these rhizomes, which is basically like the stem, yep. they don't get enough oxygen and then the whole plant mm. just rots and just dies. Yeah. Does that grow in the air? Like those, the white ones, the white yeah, ones, not would, the roots? Yeah, so these are the roots. This white bit is the roots. Ah. And then kind of like this, the stem bit, it just grows in the air. Mm. Yeah. It reminds so, me of, which plant is it? The Monstera? How yeah. they have the roots that grow in the, yeah. in the air. Like yeah, if yeah. you don't have any water, it just yeah. sticks out. Yeah, yeah. It sucks the moisture from the air. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, similar to that. Yeah, yeah. So, epiphytes, we can just plant them as simply as that. So maybe we'll start with the epiphytes. Okay. And you kind of just want to like around the front section. Okay, so wedge them in. Yeah. Find like a gap, or you can even just lay it straight on the sand. Um, and it will grow as well. I don't know. <laughs> you made it look so easy. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe this one or one of these can go in the other side as well, mm -hmm. in the corner. Hold it the right way first. <laughs> Makes it easier. There we go. Done. Easy. Perfect. Okay, so this is the progress. We've kind of looks much better already. <laughs> the green. Yeah, I love wished. the green. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking things in your head, and you're like, yeah, I'll let you do you. <laughs> oh, perfect. That looks really good. Wow. Great. Lesson learned. <laughs> so I just put this piece right there into a little gap. After, I can imagine like after a few weeks, it would start to find its own place and just yeah. fit in. Yeah. All right. Next part is a little bit tricky, but it's really satisfying when you get it right. We're going to mix them together mm -hmm. because uh, it looks a little bit more natural. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, this one's going to grow a little bit taller in the future yeah. as well. So you want to hold it like 45 degrees. So when you Just push it base. in on the base and when you push it in, it kind of stays and then you like slowly let go and you push, mm. you release and you push and you release and you push and then mm. your tweezers will come out. 
pushing the plant in, I want to try to go as deep as possible. Because mm -hmm. that will help to stabilize the plant and also get as much nutrients to the plant. Yep. Yeah, I'll show you like this. I'm going all the way in. And then I'm like releasing, like pushing. pushing down at the mm -hmm. same time. You can kind of like wedge the soil around as well to stabilize mm -hmm. it as you would do in gardening. Okay, that doesn't look too hard. Doesn't look too hard, right? <laughs> right do another one for the camera. <laughs> okay, I'll do another one for the camera. Um, I'll do this one. Okay. okay. This one's a little bit harder because you can see it's not as straightforward. Like mm -hmm. all the roots are like dangling around and everything. So this one's like a clump. This is like a clump. You don't just do yeah. one. Yeah, no, you do like a clump. And the way to do this is you want to like pre-arrange it a little bit so that the base is like tight together. together. Yeah, like a bunch, right? And then the same thing, you want to like hold it at like a 45 degree angle. And then when you wedge it in, kind of just push it all the way in as deep as possible. And then you push, release, push, release, and then just shove a little bit of soil back in and then you're mm -hmm. done. That looks so good. When it grows out, it's gonna fill up that back area. Yes. Or like blend in. Yeah, yeah. That's the plan at least. All right, you're up, Van. Okay. Yeah, at the Oop. base. There we go, at the base. <laughs> Yep, nice. Keep going all the way until you fill the glass. Yep. Yep, pretty good. Ooh, that's really good. Best. Well done. Well done. <laughs> well done. Thank nice. you. So it's very satisfying. Or well, for me, when I'm like planting and it's like going all the way in, mm -hmm. like for me, I find it very satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can always like do one, check on your arrangement and yeah. see how it looks. You can always change things around, right? Yeah, that's right. You can <laughs> always pull it up. It's not a permanent place right now because it's still, we're still in the process. Yeah, that's right. So tighten it. Yep, perfect. Nice, nice. Yeah, great. It's not too hard, actually. Not too hard, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is what it looks like so far. The back and the front. It's filling out. Yeah. That looks really good. Yeah, yeah. Very green and lush. Seems like it's quite complicated, but it's not when you have all the materials provided for you. <laughs> <laughs> and now you can see the plants peeking out over the Yeah, rocks. that's right. That's right. Looks really that's nice. Right. Okay. What's Perfect. next? So we are pretty much done. This is kind of like the final. Yep. And then what we usually do is just spray it a little bit, give them some moisture. Mm -hmm. And then we'll add a little bit of water just so that, you know, like there's enough moisture yeah. inside. And when we put the lid on, it will kind of like keep the moisture in. Mm -hmm. Now this particular vase has like these ventilation holes. So right. we've got a little spray bottle and we basically just- And this is just water, right? Just water, just water. Yeah, just spray a little bit down. There's not much water left in here. <laughs> there we go, much better. And then we just fill up with water, put the lid on. Mm -hmm. and that's it. The water helps to like weigh everything down a little bit as well. A little like bit. Settle, settle everything down. Yeah, place. yeah. It's not. It's really not going to be a lot of water. It's just like a yeah. tiny bit. You can't see like coming through to the front. Oh yeah. The color changing. I see the the sand yeah. changing color as well. The easiest thing about this, I think, is that there's not a specific amount of water that you need to give it every single day because it's just meant to it's be. It's already filled. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. some plants, right. you underwater, you overwater. This is a lot easier. Cool. Done. The final product. <laughs> <laughs>